Hey, I'm Scott with Dialed Archery, and one of the most common questions we get uh, regarding the ARXO site is, how do you sight in the site, or how do you find your yardage tape? The long story short of the sight in process is you have to find two yardages. And the first yardage has to be 20 and 20 yards is the most important because that's what everything else is based off of. So if your 20 yard mark is off by a yarditude, that's only going to magnify as you go to further distances. So to start off, once you have the sight installed on your bow to find your 20 yard mark, you're going to start by adjusting your actual windage bracket, which is in the angled elevation rail up or down according to where you're, you're impacting. So a lot of people want to go right to the dial and start adjusting the dial to find their 20. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But um, the whole goal is to get your 20 yard mark as close to zero as possible on your setup tape. And there's two reasons for that. One, if your 20 yard mark is at zero on your setup tape, then that is your dead stop. So that, that means that when your dial is bottomed out, you're at 20. So that's a very easy uh, to find reference point. And then the other reason is with your 20 yard mark as close to zero, you're also utilizing as much of the tape as possible. So when you just go to the dial right away and start cranking on it to adjust your 20, you're just eating up tapes because that has to come from someplace. So that's gonna, you're sacrificing tape on the back end for the front end. And again, it's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's just not the most efficient way to utilize the tape. So, Finding your 20 yard mark, you're gonna start off by adjusting the windage bracket up and down in the rail. And a lot of people will say, you know, because our windage bracket and second axis are on the same part, when you adjust the, the windage bracket in the rail, is that gonna affect my second axis? And the answer is it could. It just depends on, you know, how loose do you, do you loosen up the two screws? And then, you know, if you hold that bracket as you adjust, you can maintain your second axis, but Yes, it could affect your second axis a little bit, which then you can go back and fine tune later on. But the important part is just getting that adjustment within that rail for your 20 yard mark. If it turns out that you run out of adjustment with the windage bracket, so let's say you're continuously impacting low and you have to keep moving your scope housing you know, further and further and further down, and then eventually you reach the bottom of the elevation rail and you're out of room, that's fine. That that does happen. You know, everybody's setup is, is different. Uh, there's a lot of variables and a lot of factors that come into play when, you know, finding your actual yardage tape. So that is going to happen. And there are certain things you can change to prevent that, but that's a whole different can of worms to open up later on. Um, but if you do run out of adjustment within the rail, then you can go to the dial uh, to finish off the process. So um, you know, you want to try to make as much adjustment as you can by adjusting the, uh, the bracket within the rail. So let's say we go through that, you know, we're driving tax at 20 yards and we have our uh, 20 yard mark confirmed at zero on our setup tape, which that's ideal. Okay, cool. So now it's going on to finding our second yardage. And a lot of people will shoot uh, 60 yards for their second distance. Um, because that's what they're used to, whether it's from you using, you know, previous sites or previous Tate systems and 60 yards is fine. That'll work. Um, it will get you a tape, but it won't necessarily get you the most accurate tape. We found through, I mean, setting up, you know, hundreds and hundreds of sites and doing testing ourselves that the further the distance is on that second yardage, the more accurate the tape's gonna be because you're collecting a larger sample size. So even just going from like 60 to 70 on your second distance, that even though that, that's only 10 yards and it doesn't seem like that much, it is enough to where you're gathering more data because of a larger sample size. So our suggestion and our preference is to either do 70 as your, as your second yardage or if you can even push it out to like 80, um, that is ideal. And again, that is what's gonna give you the most accurate pre-printed yardage tape, especially at further distances. If you are only capable of shooting 60 yards, whether it's because you know, your range only goes to 60 um, or just you know, proficiency wise, 60 is kind of your max, that's fine. Like I said, it's still gonna get you a tape. It's just once you get past 60 yards, you may start seeing a little fluctuation 
um, in your yardage marks, but it'll definitely get you a tape. So let's say we're gonna do the 70 method, just that's, that's what I like to do. So 20 was zero on our setup tape. And then on my particular bow, after shooting it, I found out that um, mark 35 on my setup tape is my 70 yard mark. So my 20 yard mark is zero on my setup tape. My 70 yard mark is 35 on the setup tape. So now I have my two, my two yardages that I need and that's all I need. So then what we're gonna do is with every site comes your pre-printed yardage tape kit, um, which is in this little Ziploc bag here. And within that bag is also our uh, yardage tape selection card. So it's literally just kind of a, a little business card looking um, card. And on one side, it has your setup tape on the one edge. So this setup tape is gonna mirror the setup tape that is on your setup ring on your site. And then on the back side, it will have the multi-indicator uh, setup chart, which we'll get into here in a second. So with this setup tape on the card, we are gonna mark off our two yardages. So again, 20 was zero, 70 was 35. So with a pen or a marker, you're gonna mark off zero and then 35. And then I always like to use some sort of straight edge. Um, I'm gonna use our dial wrench here just to extend those lines further. Um, it's a little easier for me to, uh, to read. But um, so once you extend those lines, then we are gonna use those lines and match them up with our actual yardage tapes uh, that came with the site. And we're gonna see which tape matches up the best. So we're gonna match up our 20 yard mark on our setup card and our 70 yard mark on our setup card and see which tape is gonna match up the best. So there's 48 different tapes that come in the tape kit. So finding the right tape is, is actually pretty pretty easy and chances are we will have a tape for most, um, most shooters. Where you run into um, where we may not have a tape is if it's an extremely fast bow or an extremely slow bow, um, in which case you can default back to our custom tape builder. So we'll start off here at kind of one of these middle um, tapes. I'm gonna start on the card that has some of the, the teen numbers and see which one matches up the best. So again, I'm matching up my 20s and my 70s. And this is actually gonna be, this is actually gonna be slower than I thought. And what you'll find is as you're matching up these, these marks is you actually might find two tapes that are like really close. So like here, tape 19 looks really good, but then I'm gonna try tape 20 as well and tape 20 actually looks like it's a little slow compared to my marks so based on my two marks tape 19 looks the best so that's the tape i'm going to select for my yardage tape and then before you install um, the actual yardage tape onto your spare switch tape ring that came with the site to find out, so in this case, I'm running our MAG-3V, which is our three pin on a vertical post. But if you're running our Stub XR pin, which is our two pin on a vertical post, it's the same process. But that's the other question we get is, how do I figure out what my second and third or my second pin are set at? And you can either shoot them in, you know, once you get your yardage tape installed, or you can use the reference chart that's on the back of uh, the site, to uh, site tape selection card. So I found out that my tape is tape number 19. So now before I install the tape, I'm gonna figure out what my second and third pen are set at. So I'll flip the card over and you can either peel the tape off the card and lay it down next to the reference chart, but I actually just fold the card over. Um, so there's a straight edge. And then I'm gonna match my 20 yard mark up on the yardage tape with the top line on the reference tape. So there's three lines or two lines, depending on what scope housing you're using, but you wanna match the 20s up with the top line. So doing that, my 20 on the top line. So this is gonna tell me that my second pin 
is 35, which is about is, is normal. And that's generally what we see for most setups. So I have 20 for my top pin, 35 for my second pin, and then my third pin is 45. So I have 20, 35, and 45 for my three pins. So now I can peel tape number 19 off, attach it to uh, my spare switch tape ring. And then this is a, a very important piece of like the tape installation uh, process that a lot of people kind of uh, go sideways on is, you know, my last yardage I shot was 70. So what I want to do is rotate my dial back to my 20 yard mark, which in this case was zero. But let's say your 20 yard mark wasn't zero. Let's say it was mark five. Wherever your 20 yard mark was, that's where you want to rotate the dial back to and make sure it stays in that position. And then I'm going to remove the switch tape ring with my setup tape and then install the new switch tape ring with my yardage tape, but make sure my 20 yard marks match up and they have to match up exactly. Again, if you're off by a yard or two, that's gonna change everything. So that's a very key uh, component in, in the tape installation. But then once I have the yardage tape installed, now I can go and set my second and my third pin using the multi-indicator bracket um, and multi-indicator needles, which I found out my second pin was at 35, my third pin was at 45. So now if you loosen, there's two set screws that are on the multi-indicator bracket, one on the top, one on the bottom. If you just loosen those screws a little bit and then the needles will come loose and then you can adjust your first and second needle to the corresponding yardages. So in this case, 35 is gonna be my first stainless steel needle, 45 is gonna be my second stainless steel needle and then any extra needles are just gonna live at the bottom of the bracket so they're out of the way, but then I still have them there as extras. Um, you know, if I were to ever bend a pin, break a pin, or you know, if I switch to somebody else's housing that had more than three pins, I have the additional multi-indicator needles. Um, so once I get those multi-indicator needles set for the corresponding uh, pins, now the setup process um, is complete and I'm ready to go out and, and shoot. For more information and to watch more instructional videos, you can check out Dialed U on our homepage at dialedarchery.com.